Welcome again to Creation Magazine Live. Uh, this is the program where we're looking at an article from Creation Magazine. That's our ministry's flagship publication for more than 30 years. And uh, depending on your watching, when you're watching this, could be much more than 30 years. But um, I love camping. I love going to camp. I've, I've always uh, I've been camping since I was you know, six months old and that right. type of thing. It's not for everyone, but uh, it's now not. I, take, I take my family camping. And of course, the time to do that here in Canada is in the summertime. So yeah. you get summer camps and send kids off to summer camps, as many parents do. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is from Creation Magazine, Volume 28, Number 3, which is the June issue of 2006. Now, uh, this is probably going to be a different camp experience that we're going to talk about today I than guess. you had. Yeah. Um, this is uh, an editorial by David Catchpole, and the, the title of the article was "Summer in the Enemy's Camp." And uh, let me just read read the start here, and we'll get an understanding of why you might not have wanted to go to that camp. It says again and again, I am amazed at the number of people I meet, many of whom are church leaders, teachers, missionaries, who tell me that f they first committed their life to the Lord at children's youth summer camp. Um, such far-reaching influence has not gone unnoticed by atheists. In the United States and Canada, they've started running atheistic summer camps for children aged 8 to 17 years. Unbelievable. So yeah. really, what, what, what have we just encapsulated there? When you're young, you make a lot of decisions about your worldview about what you believe is true, about, you know, about how you're going to live your life, all those types of things. And, and whether you're an atheist or a Christian or whatever your, your, your worldview right. is, you're, you're very influential at, at a young age. Yes, yeah, and not all, all those decisions stick, of course. I mean, people yes. who make decisions when they're three years old don't, don't end up all, all being pastors or missionaries exactly. in Africa or something. Exactly, but, but there's an overall... It's yeah. an influential time in, in, in our lives. Exactly. Sure. It says, now you might think such camps would have all the fun aspects of a Christian camp. Outdoor activities, games, etc. Just minus the Bible study lessons, prayers before meals, and speakers who exhort campers to live a Christ-centered life. But in fact, the atheist-run camps have not simply removed Christian teaching, but replaced it with a teaching specifically designed to counter Christianity. You might expect that camp lectures would spend their time proving that Jesus could not have risen from the dead, or denying his deity, or even his existence or advocating secular values such as sexual liber liberation, pro-choice, abortion, etc. However, the core emphasis of this anti-God camp teaching is strategically far more potent. They simply teach evolution. So <clears throat> this is a really important thing because I encounter so many Christians that they, they don't make the link between evolution and atheism. As a matter of fact, many Christians are comfortable believing God used evolution to create. And, and yeah. the atheists understand something. Evolution is a replacement for God. If you can explain everything without God, why do you need God? Right. So this is what they're yeah. teaching these kids at these atheistic camps. Isn't that interesting? So they're, they're not, as, as the article highlights, yeah. they're not talking about trying to disprove you know, the, the, the resurrection or focusing on the, the supposed what? contradictions in the yeah. gospel. Why bother to do that? Because that's history. Right? That's, the Bible teaching is, is history. You just replace it with a different history. Yeah. Then it yeah. can't be true. See, they, they, they focus on teaching evolution to these camp kids. That's Amazing. right. Um, of course, they show a photograph here of a, of a, a speaker, an atheist. Uh, the above photograph of, the evolution, uh, of an evolution class teacher at an atheist-run camp shows him reinforcing the classic imagined evolutionary uh, progression over millions of years. From Big Bang through to spontaneous assembly of life's building blocks, to walking fish, to dinosaurs, primates, and humans. And it's not just in evolution class that campers are taught that everything can be explained without God. The emphasis on scientific and secular understanding of the natural world is maintained throughout other camp activities too. Nature hikes, field trips to wetland areas, and teaching about alien life presupposes that life evolved not only here, but elsewhere. So it, it, everything we would consider to be the, the Christian part of the camp, the prayer, the, the devotions, the, all that kind of, you, you just swap that out for teaching about evolution right. in every aspect. It's not just removed, it's replaced. Right. A powerful deception. By teaching evolution at these camps, not only are the secular humanists giving kids an explanation of origins that removes the need for a creator, but they're also providing a foundational framework that justifies a secular anything-goes mentality. I can speak from experience just how powerful this strategy is. I remember clearly my excitement and relief to be taught at university that everything just evolved. This is David Catchpole talking. 
Uh, thus, armed with that worldview, I could, for example, have blithely ignore charity volunteers collecting donations for the poor. Better to let dog eat dog natural selection take care of it, uh, you know, call the down and outs quickly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, rather than prolonging their misery, I reasoned. Uh, he said, I now know that there's no coincidence that charitable organizations have, by and large, been established and founded by committed Christians, uh, and it's a logical That's outcome right, of yeah. a biblical worldview. What's more, the idea that everything can be explained by naturalistic causes effectively vaccinated me against multiple witnessing attempts by Christians for many years. Jesus' words, John 5, 47, certainly ring true. But since you don't believe what Moses wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? And well, Dr. Kachapool has an interesting story. where yes. he, was, he was an atheist, as he obviously hints at in this article mm -hmm. here, and talks about the influence of evolution on his own thinking growing up. Yes. He went to a meeting, a, a creation meeting, by a CMI speaker years ago, yep. and with the attempt to refute what this creation guy with a PhD was was going to talk right, about. I'm going to tell him what, what it's really yes, all about. Yes, and he came away from the meeting uh, impressed, to say the least, and, and, and today he's, he's one of the authors in Creation Magazine, who right. works with our Australian office. Yeah, you know, often I find that um, you know, in the media, and, and you'll hear people like Richard Dawkins and stuff, they, they really denigrate creationists. Oh, these harebrained creationists, and they're just anti-intellectual and all that stuff. You know, I don't think creationists are attacked because we have bad arguments. I think creationists are attacked because we have very good arguments. And that seems to be what I'm noticing. Is just, people try to, ah, poop, but you don't have to listen to those creationists. It's like, if you're watching this, and you've never gone to a meeting uh, by one of our PhD scientists, Maybe you need to take the time to, to actually do that and, and just be open-minded and take in that information because it could, it could really change your opinion on, on what, what we're actually teaching here. The, the meetings, the speaking meetings that's, uh, that the CMI speaking staff around the world, there's, there's seven offices, of course, around the world, yep. and each office has a, speak, a, a speaking staff and so on, or visiting speakers coming to that country. Yep. And uh, th that's off th those speaking events are often the first point of contact between somebody who's searching for truth and wants to know, okay, well, creation, evolution, uh, Genesis, is, is the Bible true kind of thing? Right. That's often the first exposure they'll have to what begins a long train of thinking and studying and, and uh, reading articles on the website and getting the magazine and things like that, yeah. wrestling through the question of what is really true. Is right. the evolutionary history true, true or is the Genesis history true? And I've encountered many people that have come to meetings, of course, and I'm sure you have too, and, and you know, after, they'll come up to you after hearing, hearing uh, a, a talk and they'll, they'll start making those links. You know, moms and dads going, oh, I never realized before, you know, why my kids, you know, they got to be about 14, 15, and now they're not interested in going to church, or they've abandoned their faith, and, 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 and now they, they see the links. Oh, yeah, they got taught evolution. Right. It completely erased the history, as the, the scripture said, if you don't believe what Moses wrote, you're not going to believe what Jesus says. Well, Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That history, um, that real history gets replaced. Yes. Right? There was no creation. Yeah. There was no, it, it's a big bang. There's no six days of, of it, it all gets erased. It wasn't there, it wasn't going to their world religions course that did it. Right. It was going to science class where they're not teaching science when they get to the but chapter on evolution. They're, 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 they're teaching hearing. history, they're teaching a version of history which is a replacement for biblical history. Right. As we said, if it, the, the speaking events all around the world from, from CMI uh, speakers and scientists uh, these are uh, these are fantastic. Um, we've got so many testimonies yeah. that start with that, and then and then oh, I got this book at the meeting, or I signed up for the magazine, and 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 I, and I finally came to the conclusion: yeah, the Bible is true. That's right. And then I, I I turned my life over to Jesus Christ. You can get a speaker at your church. Just go to the website. The contact information is right. there, and uh, you can start that process at your own church.